Definitely a pleasure to be here, Tino. Funny enough, in the gym, you know, as some call you possibly the fittest career at the Dutch international stage. But, you know, what has it been like for you since retirement? Um, it's been a, it's been a kind of a, a transition where you're kind of in limbo, but that that I kind of like uh, evaluated this a long time ago when it was actually playing. So, as if you if you read the book, my windows, I always said that two of my passions were either were were. Um, commentary and fitness yeah. and you know if one is not working uh, I, I could tap into the other one and you know in the, in the grand scheme of things with cricket politics you know people come and go in certain wow. situations and people get pushed some people get pulled back but that's the way how it goes as the great Napoleon Bonaparte once said you know treason is but a matter of dates it's up in the air it's down by a fine leg and taken Tina Best gets his first test wicket. Take you back to that moment because we were talking about it a little earlier. That moment you took your first test wicket. I, I, I think that, that that moment was unreal. I think if you, if you look back on the YouTube videos and stuff, you would see me jumping yes. in and then just, <laughs> I just collapsed. Right? Because um, it, it, was, it was kind of a, a, a situation that I was going through in terms of like, I, it was a big, massive hype about me um, from the South African um, cricket coach back in 2001 about mm -hmm. this little small kid that can bowl nearly 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like up or yeah, yeah, up. Correct, yeah. yeah. So it was like, it was, it was, a, it was, it happened really quickly. Mm -hmm. So I went from like, nobody knew who I was mm -hmm. to everybody knew who I was, knew who I was and, and various opinions and saying, you know, he's too small, mm -hmm. he can't make it, um, they don't think I'm strong enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's normal cr critics, you know. Uh -huh. I had no Twitter to reply. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to reply, no uh -huh. face, but to, 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 to basically uh, defend myself. So I had to get stronger. And you know, many moons ago, it was just an unreal, surreal feeling. And you know, I, I actually made West Indies team the year before. Yeah. Uh, played that, that that test against Australia, which Steve Waugh mm -hmm. said it was the slowest and flattest wicket he's ever seen. And it was it was absolutely horrible that the young bowler team of West Indies started it. But I, I didn't mind. I mean, I don't. I am one that I just ran in and bowl as quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people don't remember I had two drop catches. Yeah, I remember one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shampoo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so everybody would say like, oh, you're dear you, you got rose, you bought uh -huh. tiny overs, none for 99. Uh -huh. But thank God I didn't go for 100. Uh -huh. A fellow short of a maiden, um, a, a debutant 100. <laughs> but um, but so I had to wait an entire year. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that was a real tough transition for me. But something that Courtney Brown said to me that really stuck with me to this day. He said, people like to see changes. Mm -hmm. And you need to remodel your action somewhat, you need to, to go and find someone that can really help you with your action. Oh, Daniel coming in again to Pringle. And he's out this time, brought one back, up goes Adelbert's finger. Truth be told, I went to Sheridan Centre, um, I think it was late 2003, probably around this time as well, like Christmas time, mm -hmm. and I saw Wayne Daniel. Oh, and I freaked out. I was like, I this is Sheridan. Yeah, Wayne Daniel, like, all the yes, <laughs> like, it was like, yo, like, oh. Oh, go, look at God, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I went into me and Daniel, and I was like, Hi, Mr. Daniel, many of you. What's the one I know who you are? I said, But I still got to introduce myself. Uh -huh. And I said, Look, I grew up hearing about how fast you can bowl and how fast you bowl. You played, I think it's 13 or 14 straight seasons mm -hmm. from middle sets, bro. You know, it's 13 or 14 county seasons That's back serious, in. That is That's serious. serious. Yeah. And fast. And by the way, And by the way, right? I mean, he was playing in London, so it, wow. wasn't been, it wouldn't have been too doom and cold, but it would have been cold as well. Mm -hmm. But just to, 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 to have him speak to me on that level was immense. I mean, his, his humility just speak uh, volumes. And I just like, yo, can you come? We got a training camp up, right? Uh, is it possible you could just come and uh, work on me? I can pay you said young best you don't have to pay me it's okay. it would be a pleasure to work with you mm -hmm. and i remember the previous season i got 39 wickets i think in nine games mm -hmm. and when we and daniel started work with me um that season i played i think it was seven games i had like 22 wickets oh that was crazy but that's the first time i have i'll tell you this now joe if you're ready but i tell you no on oh. your podcast that's the first time i ever had anybody coaching me boy oh. and it was it, and I, I have already played like a heart about being on the international stage. Right? Oh. You know what I mean? So when people say Tino Best, I, that's the first time I have ever had a coach. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, in, in, like, like, had one on one. One on one with me. Oh. Like, you got the hands of who was a, a holistic coach, but who wasn't really, a, wasn't specializing in fast bowling. Mm -hmm. But that was really good for me. And 
I just came back and when I when I when I made the West Indies team again, it was it was it was like they had no other choice but to pick me mm -hmm. because I came back in regional cricket in all four. I had some like twenty six wickets in three games. Mm -hmm. I think that probably a record right? <laughs> for fast ball. I think Nikita Miller he got wickets like he's crazy with yeah, wickets like for he, sure. yeah, yeah he's slow at farm he's like amazing right I'm very disappointed he didn't play much that's okay but it was a situation that all of that build up then to work with Wayne for and do get my action a little tighter uh -huh. then to to play that series against England get my first wicket it was like wow I was like I was so thankful for God I got most wickets that series I think I got I think twelve or thirteen wickets in. Yeah. Four tests, what about twelve drop catches? <laughs> I mean, but it was it, it, it kind of like I, I went up for the young emerging player, ICC emerging player of the year as well. I lost up to uh, Ifran Patan. Mm -hmm. I lost up to him. I mean, about fifteen votes. That wasn't too bad because I, I just I just I just had so much to time waiting for, and and that was passionate for me, and that that's what made me who I am today. And that passion, funny enough, also came out again when you actually did get a record, that being in the 95 at Edge Baston. Was that a better feeling than the first test wicket? Nah, not at all. Oh. Because my job is to get wickets. <laughs> you know what I mean? So even if I made not oh. or 95, like, mm -hmm. I mean, my, my family still give me gripes, so you should have scored 100. Yeah. You know no. what I mean? But I tell them straight, like, uh, I, I get picked to, to, to get wickets. But that feeling, I don't think I can replicate that feeling again mm -hmm. because it was such a long time as well. Mm -hmm. I think I think in ninety five is probably second best feeling uh -huh. because what happened, right? I think you remember if you if you remember it was Sunil Narain's debut. Yeah, that was a saving test. Just yeah. come back. Uh -huh. No, there was just the debut. He just came from ripping at the IPL. Mm -hmm. uh, went for like over a million dollars. There was so much hype around him. And it he I was coming back for the first time for after three years. Mm -hmm. He was making his debut. So I felt so relaxed. Like finally uh -huh. a low pressure is off for me. I could like express myself. Mm -hmm. I I got ninety five. I think I got two or three kicks for thirty runs. Mm -hmm. Hit some hit strokes and stuff in the yeah. head, and they go yeah, yeah, up a yeah. little quick. I think I got it for like maybe ninety three, ninety four. Mm -hmm. A little too bad for a 30, 31, <laughs> 32 year old. Uh, but it, it was it was kind of like it wasn't a stress. Uh -huh. And I mean my entire cricket career. I mean I played like what twenty five, twenty six tests, and I can tell you this, bro. Every single test match for me, I had to try to perform at Ambrose or Walsh. Or Malcolm Marshall, or it would get dropped. It was I was constantly under pressure, like every single minute. The only time I never really felt pressure was when Darren Sammy became the captain and Otis Gibson was the coach. Mm -hmm. I think I bowled better between yeah, yeah. Thir thirty one and maybe thirty four, and I was I was I, I bought most wickets in every series I played. Yeah, the Bangladesh series, the yeah, series, yeah. the um the New Zealand series. Went back to New Zealand, got most wickets, and then I played one day as well and twenty twenty. So they had me doing everything, mm -hmm. and as soon as Gibson got a drop and Sammy got a drop as captain, I, I got dropped. So <laughs> I was like, wow. But as I tell you again, treason is but a matter of days. Yeah. So for you, you know, would you say that you felt that you accomplished what you said to do as an international cricketer? Yeah, of course. I think I think, you know, women like men like uh -huh. stacks don't like. Uh -huh. And I mean, if you look at my stats, you said oh twenty five tests, but sixty wickets. Mm -hmm. At 40 apiece, mm, uh, you will let the set the world on fire. Uh -huh. But I was never my, 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 my self. I never wanted to be Malcolm Marshall. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be Tino Best. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I mean, if I was treated um, the way I was treated in the Barbados team, mm -hmm. in the West Indies team, I think I would have been more productive. Because in the Barbados team, uh, what, I, I, I played about 65 games for Barbados, first class games, and I got like what, 230 wickets mm -hmm. at 20 apiece because I was consistently playing. So, if I play a test match, I get drawn up. Uh -huh. Sit on the squad, you play it, play it, the end of the year again. So, it was never the consistency. And, and you know, certain captains, you know, certain captains, you'll play um, The coach may not like you at the time, or you messing up the, the, the whole um, equilibrium in the team in terms of the, 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 the makeup, the, the 11. And it, it was always a very challenging for me. Mm -hmm. I can tell you something. I brought water, I was a water boy in international cricket for a ball. Maybe about 35 games, 40 games. Mm. I think if I watched like about 40 international games just sitting on the bench being a member. Because I played, I would have played 25 tasks, 26 in one days, and 70 20s. Mm -hmm. And I think I have watched about 50 games on the bench. So it was always in and out for me and never no consistency. And the thing about it was that if you look at Barbados, always was dominant. Mm -hmm. But when I get to the West Indies team, people always be like, being a player this body before you and then you sit down mm -hmm. and being a player this body or 
be only picking because he was this try regional cricket. But like, it was never the love, like how I would have had a Ronnie Barbados team. And that's just professional sports. Um, what on the bridge? I don't have any malice or hold anything against anybody. But I would just love equal opportunity for every player. That's something I always see on my social media handle. I want the same energy that usual uh, getting treated that Lebertrum can get treated. You know what I mean? So I want fairness, and I always tell people, a lot of players, and I really want you to, I really want to, to, to really uh, point home at this point, uh, really signal at this point because a lot of players get hurt while they're playing, and those hurt players are put in position of power. What do you think happened? They're gonna regurgitate the same energy that they were treated with when they were players. We gotta get out of our, out of our cricket. If we don't get out of our cricket, we just regurgitate this foolishness over and over. So we don't like you, I'm picking you. Mm. They ain't got nothing to do with talent. But if you don't like you, Joe, you can be best bowler. I'm picking you, mm. that's foolishness. And I think once we get that out of our cricket, I think that's all best you can put out and go for it. Because a good cricketer doesn't make a good coach. Uh, 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 a good cricketer doesn't make a good commentator. Mm. You know what I mean? So in order for me to talk about your cricket, I need to be a Malcolm Marshall. For me to say something about your bowling action is supposed to be cigar free swimmers or you get my point. Oh. So it's just life. As I say I time, you know, I, I don't want to prejudice against anybody. A lot of people that don't know me might think, you know, they hear a lot of things. And I, I think that in society we we grab up the things we run with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't like you because my friend don't like you. But you never met me. That energy that that body um, reciprocated with me might be different to you. So, you know, the old people say, don't pick up fire rate. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect example. But I don't live my life like that. Don't pick up a fire rate. Don't um, hold things because someone says something about somebody. You know, just be yourself and be authentic. Hold him. Hold him. Are there any young fast boys that you yourself get excited to see, whether West Indian or international? I think, I think for me, um, I love Mitchell Stark. I love Joe Farcher. Um, even though um, some people may listen to the social media crap. Um, I love O'Shane Thomas. He just needs to get a little leaner. I think that what is going to be very important for him is eating. I think eating a, for an athlete is very important as I come back to my fitness and stuff. And you know, there's so many. I like Robada as well. And I just think that I love this point that Shannon Gabriel has gone off the ball a bit. Um, but yeah, they've got a lot of exciting prospects out there. But, but my thing is that. The 2020 game. Cock, I don't want to bowl six and seven spells in a test match, you know, for $5,000. Mm-hmm. When they can just bowl three overs or two overs and make a million dollars. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that one of the most exciting prospects will, 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 be, will be Archer. I mean, a little disappointed that he didn't um, play for West Indies, and that comes down as well to, to coaching and scouting, mm-hmm. identifying talent, understanding talent. We need to put people in position that can identify those things quickly. And harness them, and I think that way, once we can do that, I don't think we can lose any players like Archer again. Mm. Um, interesting enough, social media test cricket, yeah. Archer, you know, um, there's been some tweets going back and forth, you know, mm-hmm. um, recently. Mm-hmm. Was it a case of was it a tweet over love? You know, just tell me a bit about what went down in terms of your tweet with regards to Joffrey. Yeah, I mean, I am, I'm a person that is a very, I, 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 I always speak my mind. The thing about young people, or I should say when I was young, let me say when I was young, so they, they don't get any twisted. I never took criticism off. Um, my mom would say stuff to me, my dad would say stuff to me from behind the GSL. I know not to do crack, like my, like my dad did, I know that. But my mom would always say something about my attitude and how I react to people. You need not to react and you need to just humble yourself and work hard at your game. The only way that you can get to that top level is if you do these little things. So as I got older, I realized everything my mom was saying was absolutely correct. You know what I mean? So the tweet was basically, I saw that his pace was dumb mm-hmm. from, from bowling so fast against Australia. And then I felt that even at the, the, the last test match against Australia, I think it was like, well, he got, he got, I think he got six foot, but his pace was still a little dumb. So I just felt that he needed some rest because he came from the IPL, he had a World Cup. and it, So he was just a little gassy. But then I saw him had a long period, like the test series between the Ashes and New Zealand was maybe what two, three months? Roughly about that time. Yeah, I think it was a little long. So I just felt that when I saw him come back, I, I thought that he would have been re energized, ready to, to touch 150 and really to, 
to run those New Zealanders off the off the pitch because I was looking forward to the series. So I got up and I saw Luke Bowling for two overs. It's like, yo, Jack, this man like really looking to kill this this this, this young boy. And I tweeted about it. I tweeted like, isn't the new boy concerned? That was like the, that was the first. That's like if you go back in my tweet, you see like, what's going on? You you can bowl this kid in the ground. So the second test came, and I was like, this is ridiculous. You can't got your X Factor bowler bowling 128, 132. Pace was done. So I tweeted, you know, just a little, a little cheeky as well. You know, I admit that I said, um, you know, isn't anyone concerned that his pace has dropped dramatically, even though he had so much rest? You know what I mean? And um, I said, do we have it? Do we take away the right arm fast? Because being right arm fast is a huge thing. You know what I mean? Or do, does Archer come on the fast medium rather than fast right arm fast? And he tweeted, he tweet was like maybe three three weeks old, and you know you know the social media thing, you got people who've been gassed yet. So I, I just felt like it was a situation that someone said you know, Tino Best saying that your pace is down, and when I was a young boy, I always wanted to to put my chest in the air, put my shoulders back. I'm a ninety mile bowler because I'm obsessed with pace. So I never wanted to to be able to ask the analyst how my pace was this in that lunchtime session. Mm. He said, yeah, he was, he was likely like 144, 147, 148, like normal pace. So I was like, all right, cool. Mm. And that would give me more confidence to like, yeah, I'm going to crank it a little harder, hit lengths hard, um, try to be a little bit more aggressive because, you know, my rhythm good, my, my, my legs good and everything. So he retweeted, um, he's not concerned. Him and his captain are not concerned about his pace. He's good, but he appreciated it. So I was like, all right, cool. And I think it was like five hours, like maybe... Three, four, maybe oh, two hours, maybe two, not, maybe not five of the loads, or maybe like two hours later. I went and had a conversation with my son, and I was speaking to him about some, some stuff, father and son. And I said to him, you know, I always find that young sirs, like you guys don't take criticism well. You know, I was talking about what education, I'm talking about um, him in terms of becoming a young man, don't lie when he block, um, no, I know you got your friends, be careful, you know, and, 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 and sometimes he might feel. Like, I'm trying to, to disrespect him and trying to say that he should stop himself. But it's not that. I'm trying to save his life. So, for the morning's discussion of what Joe first said and what the discussion I had with my son, I was like saying, you know the youngsters just think that everything, they might think, they might take it as criticism, but it's not that. As the old folks would say, you live and you learn. So, I, that was my tweet. I mean, I said, this young generation thinks that when you speak to them, it is disrespectful. I just had a conversation with my son and he, everything he says, he thinks is disrespectful. You know what I mean? But as the old folks say, you live and you learn. Has nothing to do with your father. I was talking about my son conversation and just thinking out loudly about how young people are in general. I have a nephew, um, I got a niece. Even when I speak to them, they, they always feel like, oh, you, you, I try to stifle them. Like when we were parents, I mean, when we were, our mom spoke to us, we'd be like, oh, mom, for heaven's sake, man. I know, I know, I know. All right, mom, so but they're trying to, to pay you because of their mistakes. That's all they were doing. And that's why I put in my son in that tweet. And Jofa, I don't know if he was pre the, the page or whatever, he retweeted it and said, oh, you got your five minutes. I was like, what, what? So I, I, I replied in love. I mean, like, no man go to South Africa, ball as fast as you can as a raccoon. Um, and then, you know, the team already got medium pacers. Just go and do well. Cause blessings, respect, and love. And that's the end of it. No retweet because I, I, and when I was writing this, I said, people are going to come through, going to take this, this whole conversation and try to make it into an argument or something. And, and that was not the case. Uh, all people talking, you know, they disrespect. But the thing about life is that everybody got a mind for themselves. So people are going to read things completely different to how you read things, bro. You know what I mean? And that comes with maturity. So I, I can't sit down and act like a 20 year old. When I was a 20 year old, I'm 38, I'm 39, I can't act that way. That's nearly 20 years ago. So when people see me, they're still probably that. When people see me on social media, people see me up, they think that there's this little 21 year old little cricketer mm -hmm. that was hot, had the world on his feet, vexed, angry, all kind of things. That's not the case. If I'm not playing cricket, I'm the most coolest cat that you can ever come around my life. I remember my good friend Hayden Gill. We got closer after cricket and stuff. Hayden said, well, Fidel was terrific. Tino Best was horrible. And, and he could only report on what he sees. And I could not hold that against him. I could not go on any... I couldn't see him on public. I had no way to reply or to defend myself. 
So I couldn't go and say to him, you know, Hina Gill, you're a real A, whatever, you're a real freak. You're... I couldn't say that because that is his job to report. It is my job to get the kids. And if I think within myself I didn't do a good job, you can be honest. And deep down inside, any bowler that know that he started off going 150 kilometers and someone says something about it and you reply, it is in your thoughts. You are thinking about it. It is affecting you. And I think that one of the interviews he went in and said his speed gun was wrong. So he is thinking about his pace. And the thing about it is that Joe is not losing him up. And I have viewed my concerns for the longest while. Your X Factor bowler cannot bowl 42 overs. They can't. Cody Brown is the perfect example. Darren Sammy is a perfect example. I used to, sometimes I will one ball, maybe a six over spot. Sammy will say, nah, give me three strong ones. And I'm like, like, for real? You know what I mean? So, as a, as a, as a, as a captain, as a coach, you've got to take care of your players. You've got to understand what your players bring to the table. And I think that he's being over, over ball. And I fear for him in terms of, like, not, England not using it. I think they're using it as a disposable friggin' item. Like, remember the great uh, Devil Malcolm? Got treated horribly. He was bowling quick, they came in Australia, they wanted to remodel his action. Philip Lufrecus, Glass and Small. There's Milton Small. There's so many um, players of, 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 of black ethnicity that have not been treated well by England. I can say this. I got a personal friend, Michael Carberry, who I think he can get as much run as a Dan Milan. Damn, David Milan can't bat half as good as, as Michael Carberry, but because of whatever, he get pushed more. And look at Chris Jordan. Chris is a fantastic. How Chris Jordan could not make that work at it? Between you and you're a cricket fan. Like, seriously, Chris Jordan go play the cricket. He is the, one of the best deaf bowlers in the world. He's a fantastic fielder. Probably, we can argue that he's probably the top two best fielders. Maybe Martin Guttel. Give and take. Ben and, ben and Jordan. But Jordan has taken some spectacular catches. And you see how he's been treated. He's playing a little 2020 now and then for England now. But he's a way better cricketer than that. And I just believe that there's a situation that... Um, they're not treated well, and I just think that he might be just a disposable item because there's no way that you're 90 mile of should bowl for two over 30 years. So that's just how life is, and I just hope that he can go from strength to strength, and I hope they can understand his value, and he doesn't become uh, a one hit World Cup winner for England. And I hope that he go from heights to heights, and I wish him all the best. Right, well, I think that's all the time we have for another. Definitely appreciate it, and mm -hmm. definitely all the best going forward as a commentator. Yeah, cheers, buddy. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, respect. Yeah. Anyway.